Hello, everybody. Yeah, I know I look terrible. Um, I just want to get on here and talk about my aunt. Um, everybody in my dad's family is gone except for cousins. And on my mom's side, everybody was gone but my aunt. And, uh, well, she was 90. Um, but all of us kids had somebody to still hold on to. And uh, she didn't have her mind. She had reverted back in her dementia probably to teenage years. And uh, there, there, there's been stuff going on with her that the nieces and nephews couldn't do anything about. Because if we did, believe me, we would have stepped in. But for five years, while well, her son took care of her until he had to go to um, prison over a, some stuff. And um, then her daughter had her. And then uh, for five years, she's just been passed around. She's not lived in the greatest of conditions. And the last time she was with her grandson and his girlfriend kicked her out of the house, a nine-year-old. Well, then somebody else took her over who wasn't family. Um... You know, my brother went to see her. And after that, this woman wouldn't let nobody see her. See, she was passed around for her Social Security. Sometimes they'd let put her in a nursing home. And uh, then when it got time for the money to go in her car, they'd take her out. Uh, but, uh, oh. this woman got a hold of her. Well, it was her son's ex-wife. And, uh, this woman, boyfriend's a pedophile. But, uh, after my brother seen her, none of us were allowed to see her. Well, Monday, the story all unfolds, um, because I had been telling people, give me the address, and I'll send the police over there on a wellness check and tell them, you know, the way she's been treated, that, you know, um, she needs to not get medical care. She needs to, you know, hoping that if we could get her to the hospital, they would put her in a nursing home, and then we, you know, well, nobody gave me the address. And Monday, um, I was really busy, and later in the evening, I heard she was in intensive care. Um, and she had a van on. And my sister was down there helping my cousin. And the emergency room doctor said that my aunt was... Uh, minutes from dying when she came in and this woman she lived with told them that my aunt wanted to live so they put a vet on a 90 year old well given my aunt's condition and going back as far as being a teenager, she wanted to go home with her mom and pop. And, of course, if you ask any teenager, they're going to tell you, no, I don't want to die. So anyway, she's in intensive care. I found out she only weighs 70 pounds. As an RN that tells me 
that they were starving her. And uh, I guess her, her urine was very concentrated, which it wasn't probably giving her any water. Well, they said she wouldn't eat and drink. Well, <laughs> she's not going to eat and drink if you're not going to help her. Um, they told the doctor that she walked, but my sister said she had foot drop. There's no way she was going to walk. And that her one toe was all bloody and scabbed up. There again, we don't know what they did. So, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, um, she's on the vent. You know, you can't hardly, they said you couldn't hardly get any uh, pulses and blood pressures were low. Of course, they had a heart monitor on everything. Uh, but the woman, um, everybody said, oh, they had power of attorney. They have, well, the hospital found out that my one cousin, her daughter, still had power of attorney. So therefore, this woman, she wasn't allowed in there anymore. And I'm going to tell you, if I'd have been down there, I'd have been a world. I'd just been a tornado going through that place. You know, um, I'm not sad because my aunt died. I'm sad for her life that she had to Uh, no person needs to be treated like that. And how can you prove it? I mean, I know she was mistreated. She was abused. She was starved. Anyway, uh, yesterday, uh, I was sitting in the kitchen and I just started writing a letter to God. Not like a prayer. I just wrote him a letter. And it was around 12 o'clock and I told him to take her home. And uh, my sister called me later. She said oh, that. She had died at 12.56 yesterday. Even with the vet on, she went. And I know God took her. So she's at peace now. She's with her family. She's happy and nobody's going to abuse her again. But if you ever run across something like this, please make the most effort you can to help them. <coughs> Bye.